With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Last year, more homes canceled cable TV than ever before. Why? It's just too expensive. For half the price of cable, you can get Fubo TV and watch the live sports and TV you love. Try free at FuboTV.com. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. This is Rod Mahood, your in-game voice of the Niagara Ice Dogs, and you're listening to the Dog Pound Podcast on the Armchair GM Sports Network, your podcast source for all game analysis, team interviews, and up-to-date news regarding the Niagara Ice Dogs. Perlini! Overtime! Ice Dogs win! Hosang! To a kill, Thomas. Thomas has the angle. Welcome into another episode of the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs, proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Visit any four of their great Niagara region locations. Brandon Caputo and Cam Halbert are with you to break down the Ice Dogs 5-2 victory over the Windsor Spitfires here at the Meridian Center on this Sunday afternoon, the final game before the OHL trade deadline this Wednesday Guys, make sure you're following the podcast on X at Dog Pound Podcast and like us on whatever audio platform you're listening to us today on demand and check out our website, armchairgmsports.com for all of our weekly feature articles. Cam, this was... The Ice Dogs didn't go to overtime today, so that wasn't third straight game uh, going to, to extra time, but it's their third straight game earning a point, five of six in the last three games. Yeah, a, a great performance today and uh, did get a little dicey near the end. Thought that we might get some of the... Uh, you know, the uh, the scary stuff that happened at the end of the Owen Sound game, but that was not the case, and Ice Dogs were able to take care of a Windsor Spitfire team that has been struggling this year, but a great performance by uh, by the entire team. We'll get Ice Dogs head coach Ben Boudreaux and as well o- goaltender Owen Flores uh, at later on in the postgame today. So with that said, Cam, let's quickly look at the lineup before we get into any of the actual game stats. Interesting first line tonight. Mike Levin, Gavin Bryant, and Evan Klein. And if you listen to our last game recap, we talked about how well Evan Klein had played, even though he didn't get on the score sheet, was one of the most noticeable players. And Ben Boudreaux obviously must have thought the same thing because he rewards Evan Klein with that first line right wing spot. Essentially the third line from uh, the the prior game. And yeah, Evan, in my opinion, had his best game against Owen Sound. And they get rewarded with the first, the top line in today's game against Windsor in Mike Levin, Gavin Bryant, and uh, Evan Evan Klein. And they looked amazing from the start, every shift. And it wasn't just, uh, you know, hardworking. Um, this was snappy passes in the offensive zone, cycling that we haven't really seen a ton out of. Uh, inconsistency from the Ice Dogs. Uh, they were really surprising today and uh, looked like a real top line. It was absolutely fantastic. You had Kevin He and Ryan Robrick together with Matthew Paris, which was, and we'll get into it in the goal summary, but a very good offensive line tonight for the Ice Dogs. Yeah, I think that Robrick, again, continuing to play that center role, which is, I think is massive for this team. Uh, excited to see how he continues to grow in that. And uh, on, we're going to get into the game re- or the goal recap in just a little bit, but he had a fantastic defensive play in which he knocked the puck down twice in the offensive zone. He is the most nonchalant forechecker that I've ever seen, not just in the OHL, but just like watching hockey. It looks like he's not really going at full speed, but he finds a way to knock down every puck on the forecheck, and uh, just another great game from him as well. And Kevin as well, kind of a passenger in today uh, on today's game. 
Um, but he looked great as always. And then Matthew Paris with a with a big goal as well. So uh, great job on that second line. The third and fourth lines today were Brody Crane, Ethan Zada, and Zach Lavoie on the third line, and Andrew Vermeulen, Ivan Galianov, and William Stewart who was noticeable today in the limited playtime that he did get. I was impressed by the Ice Dogs' number 20, William Stewart. I agree. I think that, for whatever reason, the fourth line was one of the most noticeable. Again, we don't get access to, to time on ice, um, but just from the eye test, I noticed Galianov and, and Stewart as well as Vermeulen out there quite a bit, um, at least when they were. Uh, it was high energy, and uh, they were they, they did a pretty good job at least uh, limiting damage and things like that. Uh, uh, all four lines contributed something today, and I think that was a massive thing for the Ice Dogs. Absolutely. So as far as the defensive side of things, Connor Federko finally moves back to D, his natural position, with Andrew Wysik on that first pair. The second pair was Daniil Soblev and Urban Padrekar, and then Ryan Van Netten and Artem Frolov as Bronson Ride was out of the lineup tonight. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, I, I noticed Frolov quite a bit, uh, especially offensively, and he made a couple of good defensive plays as well. Uh, Wysik was extremely quiet today. Classic, uh, you know, quiet defensive game where, and it's not a bad thing. You, you don't always want to notice a defenseman because when they get their name called, it's not always for the right reasons. Uh, Federko was, Federko is hammering everyone, looking for looking for big hits. And uh, Padre Carr had uh, some pretty good offensive rushes as well and a really good breakup uh, in, I believe, the second, or er, the first period, sorry, uh, on Liam Greentree, who is uh, you know a projected first round pick in the NHL. So a uh, great job by him as well. Owen Flores gets his tenth straight, got his tenth straight start for the Ice Dogs tonight, uh, and former Ice Dog goaltender Joey Costanzo uh, win against his old team here in Niagara. So uh, Owen Flores continues to you know be the the workhorse and the guy that the uh, coaching staff is leaning on in the net. Yeah, and I, I think that. Uh, the coaching staff has not given up on the season yet as of this recording, the eight points back of a playoff spot. And I, again, I still think that that might be a little out of reach. But nonetheless, while that's still in play, we heard in a, a few games ago in the in a post game with, uh, with head coach Ben Boudreau that Owen Flores is going to get the net as often as he nods his head and says that he can play. Uh, Charlie Burns is still going to remain the backup, and we'll see as the season goes along. Obviously, uh, I would love to see the games played record. You know, or or what? I would love to know just the average, to be honest with you, just in regards of other starting goaltenders in the OHL, because um, Owen's going to get up there by the end of the year if he keeps playing like this. However, to start the year, very 50-50 with Vandenberg. Our game stats tonight are brought to you by JNL Flooring. If you think you get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack. Contact our Niagara Falls location. You've been your quality flooring project today at JNL Flooring. The Ice Dogs outshoot the Spitfires 45-38 to in the game. And they outshot them in the first and third period. Windsor uh, won the battle 15-12 in the middle period. But a, a good shot total here for the Ice Dogs against a Windsor team that's, uh, you know, obviously at the bottom of the Western Conference. And they needed a, a strong shot output like this. Yeah, and I, again, I think that it was the product of all four lines rolling. I mean, to get 40 shots on goal is pretty tough to do uh, in this league regardless. And uh, the Ice Dogs, again, that, that top line uh, was just dominant. Every time that they were on the ice, every rush... Uh, and it was so odd to see because you would expect, you know, some you know, more offensive output from, you know, Kevin or Rubrik or, or Zach, for example. Um, but, you know, what has normally been maybe second or third line, especially with Evan Klein, who hasn't been high in the lineup very often, uh, to get rewarded from his game and performance in Owen Sound. Uh, I really like that move by the coaching staff just to, you know, whether it's rewarding from a prior game or just, you know, not being um, afraid to, to play, you know, a line together that uh, he think might work, even if it isn't the, the quote-unquote stars on the team. Uh, and he was rewarded because that was, I don't know if it was the best performance by a line in total, but it was awfully close. It was, and as far as the man advantage, the Windsor Spitfires went one for two on the power play. The Ice Dogs only get one home power play. Again, rarity in the OHL to only have one uh, man advantage at home. But uh, the Ice Dogs, you know, they lost the the man advantage battle and, and the special teams battle, I guess you could say. Windsor 1 for 2 in the power play, Niagara 0 for 1. But uh, what did you think of – we only saw Niagara's power play once, so didn't yeah, get a good look at it. tough to get a look at it, to be honest with you. Forgettable, wasn't anything crazy. The thing I will say is that this game was not very chippy. Oh, like a lot of uh, – there was nothing really after any whistles, not until the – 
like roughly in the third period. Uh, we didn't see we didn't see Flores, uh, you know, bark at anyone. So uh, wasn't we went two straight games of him kind of going at the bench of the other team. None of that this game. It was a very just a uh, very quick game. Owen Sound took forever. Don't know what that was, but uh, the very few stoppages. And again, when those kind of games happen, you're expected to see less power plays and, and penalty kills. But it's been a few times now where the Ice Dogs really haven't gotten a lot of power play opportunities. Uh, and obviously with their power play struggling, uh, you're going to want to see them capitalize on it for sure. And the Ice Dogs lost the faceoff battle again tonight, 40-27. to Again, they're missing a couple of their big centers with Alex Asadorian and Mike Potalu as well, which which p- plays into that. But Gavin Bryant w- was obviously out there. But uh, somebody that w- that was good in the faceoff dot tonight, Matthew Paris as a winger, he won five of eight, and William Stewart won two of two. Oh, love to see that. And again, I think that you got to remember that we've got two sixteen-year-old centers in Ruber Gonzada, and the, uh, the like faceoff skill is one that takes a while to develop. Uh, so we'll we'll have to wait and see and continue how that uh, how that plays out. Didn't kill him, you know. There wasn't really anything that came off of a faceoff loss, uh, so that was uh, something to keep in mind. And Gavin Bryant was, you know, the normal good Gavin Bryant self. Our scoring summary tonight is brought to you by the Niagara Employment Help Center, helping people find work in Niagara since 1983. Check out their up-to-date job board at ehc.on.ca to find your next work opportunity today. The Ice Dogs got on the board first in the first period, the only goal of the first period, and that was Mike Levin scoring his 13th goal of the season on a slick face-off play by Gavin Bryant where he just walked the opposing centerman and fed him on a backhand. I think he surprised almost everyone in the arena because it he... Right off the draw, it was like no one moved, and he danced right around, a step right around, uh, a set play by him, and Levin was left wide open and just slammed at home. Probably the easiest goal that he's going to have this season. Uh, But, yeah, what heck of a play by Brian on that one. The second goal for the Ice Dogs came early in the second period, so a a good start for them in that middle period to get that second goal. Ryan Robrick, assisted by Kevin Heehan, Urban Padrekar, Robrick's 12th goal of the season. Yeah, and it, after he scored, he had a little bit of fun. Uh, you know, a little dancing towards the bench. I don't know if he was pointing to somebody on the bench, uh, maybe a maybe a shout-out as to where to go on uh, on Costanza, maybe a report card, if you will. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he head up the whole way, fired low far side, just a shooter shot, and uh, uh, great to see him get back into the tie for the league lead among rookies in terms of goal scorers. Uh, he did go up against... Uh, uh, Cole Davis of the Spitfires today, who uh, he is kind of in lockstep with in terms of points and goals. And he did not get any tonight over on the Windsor Spitfire side of things. The Ice Dogs then extended their lead halfway through the middle period, and it's Captain Zach Lavoie finishing off a nice play by Iv- Ivan Galianov and Brody Crane for his 13th of the year. Yeah, and good for Zach, too. I, I think he's had a, he's gone through a little bit of a tough stretch here. It kind of reminds me of what Kevin went through uh, the first you know, 15, maybe 10 to 15 games where it just seems like he's trying to do too much, maybe. Uh, he does get moved down to the, the third line, the, the quote-unquote third line. I think that most of them were rolled pretty evenly, to be honest with you. And his goal came, uh, I believe, in the middle of a change because he was actually on the ice with... Um, with Galianov and Stewart, I believe, part of the fourth line. So that wasn't him being on the fourth line. I think that was just how the how the shift broke down. But uh, a great shot, and uh, happy to see him get back uh, back in the goal column. Speaking of mixed up lines due to due to uh, you know line changes, we did see Connor Federko and Daniil Soblev out uh, on a D pair for I guess it was like a half of a shift, and the amount of physicality that they put out on the Winter Spitfires and that one half a shift. I think they each probably had two or three hits. Yeah, it's just fun to see, right? Like, they're both just hit first and uh, definitely definitely fun to see. I think that the spreading it out is probably still the best move, just given the rest of the uh, the roster. But yeah, that was uh, definitely got a glimpse of what that could be. Yeah, we definitely heard some banging along the glass there uh, when those two were out there at the same time. The Spitfires battled back in the second period. Liam Greentree, uh, the aforementioned from Cam, uh, going draft to be drafted in the NHL this upcoming draft. He gets the goal on the power play, their only power play goal of the evening, and that broke Owen Flores' shutout because he was really rolling at that point. Yeah, obviously tough for, for Flores there, but uh, he did well. I think the, the big thing about this is that uh, the only time in which we saw them kind of give a real big pushback and, and get close. Uh, it was obviously that, that top line with uh, with Green Tree and I believe uh, Chris DeFaro on the back end. And they were, you got a sense as to why they're, why, why uh, Green Tree's got over 50 points already. He was uh, really kind of having his way. But they didn't, they bent but didn't break. And uh, Flores came up big. We heard from 
uh, head, head coach Ben, uh, ben Boudreau in the post game last game, and he said we just need our goalie to make a couple saves. You know, they score five, and uh, you know we, we end up with a big dub. The Spitfires then scored again to cut it to three two, and you're thinking, okay, you know the Ice Dogs going to be able to respond to that well, or is it going to be what happened in, against Owen Sound where they give up the tying goal and then lose in overtime? But the Ice Dogs responded well in that third period. On the very next shift after Windsor had cut it to one, Mike Levin gets his second goal of the night from Evan Klein and Gavin Bryant, which was a very good, you know, productive line tonight. No, like, like I mentioned, yeah, like that line was always dangerous. And to, you know, I, I get, it got the sense. Again, they kind of did that thing that they have been doing recently where they kind of just uh, sh- kind of go into a shell, uh, try not to lose instead of go for the win. Uh, but right after that, it was that top line again, and uh, I would hazard a guess that we're going to see that same top line in our next game. And then Matthew Paris seals it for the Ice Dogs, assisted by Kevin He and Urban Padrekar. Ten Ice Dogs got on the board tonight with points, so you look up and down the lineup, and we talked about it. You know, contributions from everybody to, to really pull through on this one. Yeah, and uh, on that play, I believe Roebrook didn't get the secondary assist. Nope. Okay, well, it, that he got an assist, he got a secondary assist on that. That's the one that I was alluding to. Uh, again, just kind of a slow breakout. He's just roaming around. Uh, it's a saucer pass off the boards. He knocks it out of the air, goes right back. I believe it was Kristofarov did it again to keep the puck into the zone, and that was when uh, they were able to move it around and, and get it on net uh, for that goal. So again, just a great job all the way around and way to make sure that they secured the win this time as opposed to what happened uh, against Owen Sound. And they definitely needed to against, uh, you know, an opponent like Windsor. Yeah, we talked about a lot of winnable games coming up for the Ice Dogs, and this was one definitely circled on the calendar, especially after the way that they really let Owen Sound gain that extra point because the Ice Dogs really deserved that that extra point. So for them to respond like this today, I think, was big for their confidence. I agree. And then the next two games against, I believe, Flint and Barry, uh, you know, we're – We've got a potential chance to be within five games of a, you know, five points of a playoff spot, and uh, you know, other teams in the league are going to be making moves. Obviously, with the trade deadline looming in the OHL, uh, we'll see. Peterborough has been reeling a little bit, and uh, definitely traded off one of their their best asset. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see. You know, this Ice Dog team ha- last year they did they made so many moves. There were so many moving parts, including the coaching staff, and this team. Uh, regardless of the struggles they've had, every game has felt almost winnable halfway through, and that's just a, a marketed improvement over the prior year. On top of that, this team has pretty much been the same for the last two and a half months. So if you've got teams selling off parts and they've got to bring in some you know, rookies and call-ups, you know, obviously I don't think their performance is going to get better. The Ice Dogs, we'll see what happens at the trade deadline, uh, but you know, even if a few guys are moved... This team, for the most part, has been together the whole time, and I think that that would that'll really go uh, far as uh, in, in terms of their their play down the stretch. So uh, these next two big games, again, if they can win these, uh, it gets pretty interesting. And they, they've experienced it. They've went through it. They had a, eight, upwards of eight or nine guys out of the lineup this mm-hmm. year, so they can play with, with a lot of different line combinations and still have success like they've shown earlier in the year. So stay right here. We'll be right back with more post-game reaction to the Ice Dogs' 5-2 victory over the Windsor Spitfires right after this commercial break. So stay right here. right back on the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs, proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Pets bring immense joy to our homes, becoming an integral part of our families. But this living, loving experience often requires a little extra care and attention. That's where Global Pet Foods comes in, with owners and staff ready to support you every step of the way. Check out one of their locations today, 3643 Portage Road in Niagara Falls, 160 Highway 20 in Font Hill, or 400 Scott Street and 344 Glendale Avenue in St. Catharines. Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Proud to sponsor the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Wild Bill's Auto Repair is your local center for auto maintenance and repair in the Niagara region. Since 2012, Wild Bill's Auto Repair and Body Shop has been helping customers stay safe and confident on the road, knowing their vehicles in top running condition through their services. Located at 7868 Oakwood Drive in Niagara Falls, the garage started as a tribute to the owner's father, William Robert Hunter, who passed away, continuing the same community spirit and high level of service which customers came to expect from him back at Hunter's Auto Repair. 
Their multi-award winning auto shop has earned the trust of the NAGA community with its fair treatment of all customers who can feel confident they'll get the trustworthy advice and repairs during their visit. Their experienced crew loves meeting new people and looks forward to forming a lasting partnership for the care of your cars. To find out more or to book service, contact them today. 905-358-7868 or wildbillsauto.ca. Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road since 2012. Are you currently looking for work in the Niagara region? If so, you owe it to yourself to check out the services provided by the Niagara Employment Help Center located at 6100 Thoroughstone Road in Niagara Falls. Their many free services include a fully staffed resource area open to the public, resume and cover letter writing, local labor market information, job search strategies, assistance with clarifying employment, training and career goals, employment counseling and job search support, Better Jobs Ontario information and registration assistance, and you can check out their website at ehc.on.ca or call 905-358-0021 for more information. The Niagara Employment Help Centre, helping people find work since 1983. JNL Flooring is Niagara's specialty flooring and design company. They take great pride and provide elite customer service and support. With a beautiful showroom, great pricing, and a wide variety of truly unique products, JNL Flooring is your specialty flooring and decor boutique shop. All of their products are environmentally friendly and responsibly produced so you can feel good about your flooring choices. Their goal is to build authentic relationships based on honesty and integrity that they foster with respect and authenticity. Offering a unique and wide range of quality products presented by a knowledgeable and patient team, they simplify the process to make your life easier and to make your home more beautiful. Visit them at 4424 Montrose Road in Niagara Falls or find out more at jnlflooring.com. If you think you can get a better deal anywhere else, you don't know Jack at JNL Flooring. This is Kevin Heath. This is Ethan Zadig. This is Zach Lavoie. It's on Florida. And you're listening to the Dog Pound Podcast. The official podcast of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Welcome back to part two of today's Niagara Ice Dogs game recap. Brandon Caputo and Cam Halbert are with you guys. The Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs, is brought to you by Global Pet Foods, where pets are undeniably part of the family. Visit any four of their great Niagara region locations. Cam, before we get to head coach Ben Boudreau here, you know, the room knows what's coming on Wednesday, and, I mean, he's going to allude to it a little bit. They keep their spirits up, and they continue to work away at this thing, a long-term plan for head coach Ben Boudreau, and, and you can – just tell by his demeanor and the way that he goes about putting the lines together. And everything is thought out, you know, methodically about how he's approaching the rest of this season and how the team goes into the future years. Well, even with a big lineup shake, like shakeup that happened today, there's a few things that you can take away and clearly see that he's obviously uh, with that in mind. It isn't just about winning games now. He wants to make sure that the future is in place. And I would be stunned if we do not see Kevin and Ryan Robrick uh, together for the rest of the year. Um, that's They know that those two specifically are going to be the two biggest pieces on offense for the next three years, more than likely. Um, so that's obviously something that is going to be of the utmost importance that they can continue building chemistry. And they look great today. Uh, so th- th- that, that I can see. Um, you know, And obviously it is going to be pretty tough. Um, it, not to mention the couple of injuries. Like, Azadorian and, and Potalu add an interesting wrinkle here, depending on when they can come back. Because then the team looks, you know, again, like we talked about in training camp, remember all the way back when we didn't know where players were going to play because they had a pretty good amount of depth. And it's the same kind of situation here. So if those guys come back and they are able to move some players um, that are maybe over-agers or going to be over-agers for some assets, uh, because obviously this team's not done and they're not ready to compete for an OHL championship just yet um, with a draft class like they had this year and you know maybe they keep Asadorin and Potaloo and those guys come back to replace whoever they miss or vice versa maybe those guys are moved we'll see um, it gets real interesting like the, the lineup and, and things could be very strong still uh, as well as acquiring draft assets or players uh, that, that have a little bit more team control. It will get very interesting. So our post game with Ice Dogs head coach Ben Boudreau, as always, is brought to you by Wild Bills Auto Repair, helping customers stay safe and confident on the road in Niagara since 2012. 
in honor of the late William Robert Hunter. Here is Ben Boudreaux following the Ice Dogs 5-2 victory on Sunday afternoon versus the Windsor Spitfires. Consistent as ever, as this team hasn't given up. Yeah, you know we've been this resilient group, and you take a 10-2 thumping, a 6-2 uh, thumping at the same time, and that's when the pride and the resiliency comes to the surface. I mean, it's tough to expect these guys to be perfect, uh, but it's how we learn from some of these things. And we went on stretches without, uh, you know, a full team, six, seven games, losses, and now our expectation level is when everybody's back in the lineup is that we should be coming to the rink expecting to win. And 2-0 and one in our last three, uh, you know, we gave away the other one the other night, but we're trending in the right direction. I think that's really important to see, especially, you know, without an Asadorian or Potaloo or even right in the lineup tonight, yeah. we're finding different ways to get it done. Yeah. Now, after that loss last, obviously that's not what you want. What was the mood? Could you tell there was a different mood coming in here? You turned the page. Was it still lingering? No. I mean, we have to learn from our mistakes. I mean, we've made mistakes and we gave the game away. And if you don't address it, you don't learn from it, then, you know, I think that's going to be, uh, uh, you know, detrimental to the team. But the same line that uh, gave up that third goal against it, given the momentum to come back into the game, I made sure to give them plenty of ice time to, to show them that the, co the coach does have confidence in them. So they're not gripping their stick because we need those guys to play a role and I thought they were physical I thought they were pretty good here tonight sure um, they Windsor came on in the third period there it looked like they were kind of getting some momentum going um, is that going through your mind you now here we go again or do you not even think like that no I mean you see Windsor in some of the games I mean they've beaten Mississaugas they I mean they, they've played some good games and that's a good team right there and I would expect uh, any team with pride to make a push at some right. point but uh, you know we were there we were committed on the defensive side of uh, hockey and the defense led to the offense tonight which I thought was a great thing and you know uh, I'm not sure when the last time Flores had a game where he gave up less than three goals but I thought he was spectacular tonight when he needed to be and uh, give him all the credit that uh, that's due he had a great game yeah I was going to ask you about that. Um, you know, Owen Flores and there's some other trade chips too. This could be their last game. You know, um, that must go through their minds too, right? Because um, it's lingering, like we talked about the other night, it's lingering over everybody's head, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, calling a spade a spade, that's what it is, you know, yeah. and there's questions that are going to rise, especially you don't see somebody in the lineup, but uh, it's trade season, you look at uh, where you are in the lineup, and then you got to think of what's the best way to uh, to avoid these situations going forward, and sometimes, uh, you know, a team's got to trade some assets to put themselves in a position down the road, and right now our ownership uh, group, uh, our management group, sorry, West Consorti is, uh, you know, on the phones daily, so we we try to put the trust in them to do what's right for the organization, but for us, we got a we got a job to do as coaches and make sure the guys are ready to go uh, for the game. Sure, I mean you know, and it, there's a lot of hockey left, so it's not beyond the realm of possibility to still get into the playoffs. Is that for first and foremost on your mind to get into the playoffs, or is it game by game? How, how do you look at that? Yeah, I'm going to go right into our eliminated, thinking that we can make the playoffs. Okay. Right, that's the belief that you're going to have, and when you go into every single game thinking that you're going to win, that's just a, a mindset, right? Right. And the second you don't have that mindset, the second you give up on yourself and the team, and I don't think that's fair to the group. So, um, for us, we're very much going to try to make the playoffs, and you know, at the same time, why wouldn't you? I mean, there was just three weeks ago we won back-to-back -back games against two really good yeah. teams. I mean, we had a weekend off, and then we came back, won two or three three at Christmas when right before Christmas even though we should have won three or three and then same thing you bounce back after the break and the same thing you should have won three and three but come out two oh and one and so the last three or four weekends you're trending in the right direction and it gives you your team your organization belief well why can't we I've been a part of crazier things I mean we even as a player we went 19 one and two in our last uh, 22 games as a pro hockey player to make the playoffs and get to the championship so you know given my experience both as a player and a coach you you don't say die you never give up and you keep going because we've seen crazy things happen here. We rewarded Evan Klein tonight, giving him a spot on the top line. He had a really good game uh, the other night. Uh, was that uh, a reward for, for how well he played? And, and obviously uh, that line contributed with Mike Levin with two goals as well and, and Bryant centering it. Yeah, I mean, Gav had two assists. I think Kleiner had the one assist there at the end and Levin. Uh, but, uh, you know, it wasn't so much of a reward as an identity. I mean, you got Levin who wants to puck on a stick and, and he's a goal scorer, but you need someone to do the gritty work and get it deep and be the physical side and get to the net and you know we saw those beneficiaries of that line right there being Gavin and Levin with with Kleiner doing the work and you know it wasn't because Kleiner needed uh, to get up there and score goals he's got one goal in his last 10 but it's more of that identity and when everybody can buy in and play the role we're going to have success and you know Kleiner was a big part of that line here tonight.
and 10 players got on the board, a score sheet tonight. So uh, just talk about the contri contributions up and down your lineup. You mixed up the lines a little bit from the last game, but uh, were you happy with how all four lines performed tonight? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I was, and it was a, it was kind of a bad bounce on the fourth line to get scored against off the guy's face and in. But, uh, um, you know, everybody had, like I said, everybody has a role to play in the fourth line. If they're not scoring goals, they got to bring the energy and be defensively sound. And uh, they gave up that third one against with uh, three and a half to go, and I wanted to make sure that they play again knowing that the coach has got confidence in them but uh, at the same time the one switch up front was Paris and, and Lavi and you know I just thought we had too many one-dimensional shooters uh, there where we needed some guys to distribute the puck and Paris is great at making some plays and you know it was a uh, rubric that ended up scoring tonight and, and Kevin has been <laughs> making more plays as of late rather than scoring goals but I think they all complement each other and then we make that switch and Lavi scores and rubric scores and it seems like uh, it went off without a hit so sometimes you, you try to throw names in a jar and mix it up a little bit with an idea of what you have and it works out to your advantage sometimes it doesn't and tonight was one of the times it worked out for us you know what's coming on Wednesday you said you've been honest with the guys about what's to come this might be the last time that you have all those same guys in that room uh, you know what was the message after the game and what's the message moving forward if there are guys that that come out and new guys come in it's uh it's going to be maybe a different dynamic yeah uh, you know I just brought it up at the same time make sure you guys go out and enjoy each other because you never know when when your last day with a group of guys is going to be and uh, you know I'm sure with the the trade deadline looming overhead it's no secret everybody knows what happens at this time everybody knows where we stand in the standings and where our team is right now so um, you know some of our better guys our older players especially with seven 19 year olds you can only carry three in the next year I mean it makes sense to move a couple guys here so um, you know that's the inevitability of the business side which is never fun but that's why it's a business at the end of the day here and they're all uh, good assets for us so we'll see what we can't take out of the trade deadline here to make the ice dogs uh, better for us uh, in, in the long term, and that's what we're looking at as a team right now. And Windsor scored a few goals in that third period, cut it to one, but the, the team did bend but didn't break. Uh, was that something, sort of response that you were looking for as far as when you go through adversity, you were able to come through it on the other side, give up a few goals here and there, but then you responded back with, with two more to seal the game. Yeah, that's the resilience in us. The second we got scored on, we came back the next shift and scored. It wasn't a, oh, we got to grip our sticks. Now we're getting to the point where we're a little get a bit of confidence and we've had full lines. Uh, I mean, it was a really tough six-week stretch there in November and December where we didn't have a full team, injuries, sicknesses, whatever uh, has it. But now that we've been healthy, we've been seeing some consistent hockey, and I like the team that's starting to show up here for us. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. There was Ice Dogs head coach Ben Boudreau on the Wild Bills auto repair post game. Cam, more you know, candid and, and honest thoughts about where the team is and where they might be on Wednesday. Yeah, again, alluding to the fact that we've got seven guys that'll be overagers next year, and we can only have three. We've only got two overagers this year, I believe, currently in in uh, Federico as well as Sobolev. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, what happens with them um, as well? I, I, you know, obviously as a fan, you want to see them stay, but uh, when it comes to the business side of things, uh, you know, we have to keep improving. Um, but yeah, seven overagers going to next year. Obviously, I think that there will probably be a few moves made um, going into, into this trade deadline to see if we can't get some picks and assets for for next year. Um, but obviously, um, never never a fun time, you know. Obviously. Uh, as to see uh, some of these guys leave, but uh, regardless, uh, you know it'll be uh, it'll be a fun week next week. And you talked about Paris, you know, being a little bit of a distributor there for uh, Kevin and Ryan Robrick, and, and talked about even Kevin uh, becoming a little bit more of a playmaker than, than a shooter. Yeah. So uh, he was impressed with their performance tonight. Absolutely, and obviously, I think that as we've seen the season go along, uh, Kevin's kind of got that all around game. Obviously, his shot is his best weapon. Um, but when it comes to, you know, maybe Zach, he is definitely just a pure goal scorer. I don't think we're going to see him, you know, put up, you know, is, is more assists than goals very often um, when it comes to his, his uh, offensive depth. And he, he should shoot. He's got a great shot. And obviously I think that they think that with Rubric uh, on the line as well, who appears to be a shooter, uh, with Kevin, who's got a great shot, that maybe it was just too much of the same thing on one line. And they tried it for a few games, and it worked uh, once or twice. But I think that Owen Sound game, there was something uh, just a little just a little off with the line, with some offsides, and maybe, I don't want to say chemistry things, but there was definitely uh, just something a little off. So mixing it up and going with Paris, uh, it worked out perfect because, uh, again, the third line and Lavoie scored, Rubric scores, and it just looked like it was correct. 
And he talked about Owen Flores. He was impressed by him tonight, being able to hold the Spitfires to two goals, had a very solid performance, you know, shut out halfway through the game, and, and the Ice Dogs starter, you know, really pulled through for them tonight. Yeah, I think the only time in which, I, you know, we saw the Windsor kind of dominate play was the first couple minutes of the game, and Flores did his job early on, and then that late push uh, where, where Green Tree's line was just all over it, he did his job, and that's uh, all you can ask of your goaltender. You know, less than three in a game in the OHL, and you've got a shot to win. Speaking of Owen Flores, we're going to hear from him right now for our Ice Dogs feature player interview brought to you by the Niagara Dental Clinic, creating natural smiles in Niagara for 25 years. If you forgot to bring your mouth guard on the ice or lost a checklist, contact our licensed team of dental professionals in Niagara, Fall Niagara Falls to get your smile back on track. Here is Ice Dogs goaltender Owen Flores after the 5-2 victory. Back in the post game with Ice Dogs goaltender Owen Flores. Owen, your 10th straight start tonight. I know you want to get in the net, but have you ever been on a stretch like this where you've played so many games in a row? And how do you feel about that, just kind of going through the motions and uh, getting ready to play every single game? Yeah, you know, it's a lot of games in a row, but uh, I'm ready for it. You know, I haven't had this much of a stretch of a game in uh, my career here. So uh, it's, good. it's good to get in there and uh, create a rhythm, so I like it a lot. Uh, how much does it speak to the confidence of the coaching staff and, and your goaltending uh, coach, uh, Adam Monroe, the fact that, you know, they see, you know, the, the work you're putting out there and they have the confidence to, you know, throw you out there in the net every single game and, and know that, uh, that they're gonna, you're going to give your best effort out there all the time? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a game of consistency, so I try to bring that every single night. And just talk about tonight, obviously came up with a couple of big saves and the guys uh, contributed with the goals. Ten different uh, players got uh, points tonight and, uh, you know, they, they were making sure that you saw the puck in front of the net. So uh, just talk about, uh, you know, the whole team effort tonight to get this win. Yeah, you know, everyone chipped in here and uh, we, we did the little things right, chipped the puck in deep and we were blocking shots, making sure I see everything. So it was, uh, it was a huge team effort and a big two points. And you know what's coming on Wednesday, obviously, there might be some players moved in and out. How do you guys keep a, a positive outlook in the room there and, you know, the brothers that are beside you right now, you know, uh, and, and continuing to, to be there for each other despite, you know, the, the business side of it that's going to happen? Yeah, you know, it's a, the game of hockey, you know, it's a, it's a business. So uh, being tight family in there, no matter where we go, we kind of always keep in touch with each other. So uh, just kind of stay positive that way. Do you have any New Year's resolutions that you can share with us? Uh, not this year. Okay, thanks, Owen. Appreciate it. Thank you. There was Ice Dogs goaltender Owen Flores. No uh, resolutions to talk about for the new year, but uh, you know, it seems like he's pretty happy and, and content with with continuing to play a lot of a lot of or start a lot of games here, and you know, he's happy with with the way that things are going. I mean, to be honest, given the, the situation he's been thrown into the last two years with the Ice Dogs being in last place, uh, and, and obviously that's tough on goaltenders, but he's really held his own this season as well as last season. And I think that it's more of an indictment on the management staff having a um, commitment and willingness to make sure that Owen knows that as long as he's able, they're going to put him in net and give him an, an opportunity to showcase his talents. Uh, whereas, you know, in some situations you might see as players get a little bit older, I believe he's got, he's, he'll be an overager next year. Um, if he was to be moved out to another team, maybe a playoff team, things like that, might not be the one that starts every single game. And, you know, with someone who's after the past their draft year, especially goaltenders, because it's so hard to be drafted as a goaltender just based on how um, the, the career arc of, of most goalies go. Uh, he's been invited to NHL camps. So he was at Pittsburgh. He was at Pittsburgh's in development Nashville. camp two years ago, and he went to Nashville's main camp this fall. Exactly, right? So th he's obviously not completely off the radar of continuing his career professionally. Um, so I think that the way that it's going right now as to why he is playing so much is uh, and uh, the trade of Vandenberg. Like, you know, obviously that, that was huge because at the time Vandenberg was playing very well and he had kind of stolen the net a little bit. I believe he started three straight games right before he was traded. Um, and one goaltender of the week. Exactly. And I think that was the game against Kitchener, I believe. That one of they, them was one the of, one. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, the... the the commitment to, okay, you know, while we have uh, a great couple options here, um, they're committing to Flores for next season as well as this one uh, with the uh, the hope that, you know, obviously he'll want to stay and, and perform. And uh, it, the thing about Flores that's awesome to watch is you don't really see this out of goaltenders very often, but he's very emotional after the play and, and making sure his team's fired up and, uh, you know, trying to get the other team off of their uh, off of their game. And uh, you, know, you love to see that in a competitor because, again, when things aren't going well, you don't want a bunch of players that, oh, we got, we're, up, we're down by two or three, that's it, and, uh, you know, we'll try again next game. Um, Flores is a heck of a competitor, and you see it regardless of the score. Yeah, and you can tell that he puts up with no nonsense up and around his crease, and he'll, 
he'll get in there in the, in the, in the player's face. He's not afraid to uh, to get dirty in there and, and you know stand his ground in his crease. So yeah. it's good to see from a goaltender that obviously has aspirations of becoming you know a pro goaltender uh, sooner rather than later. So before we get out of here, we're going to put Cam on the spot as always with our player of the game brought to you by the Niagara Golf Lounge. Niagara's home for golf and sport year-round located in the Best Western Karen Craft Hotel in Niagara Falls. Visit NiagaraGolfVacations.com to learn more to host an event or to book your golf bay today. Cam, you got a lot of options tonight. Ten different players got on the score sheet. Yeah, we're going to go with the entire first line. Okay. That was uh, Levin, Gavin Bryant, and uh, and Evan Klein. They looked fantastic, and I got to say, when you see the lineup card as the starting lineup, starting first line for the team with you know the other members on the roster, you're kind of surprised and maybe don't know what to expect. I didn't expect what they did tonight. Uh, that looks fantastic. I can't wait to see more of it. Hopefully, we get to see uh, this line stick together uh, for a little bit longer, but uh, they did a great job tonight, and they all cashed in uh, throughout the game. And Mike Levin had a few chances to get the, the hats Almost flying did. here in Meridian Center. He was holding on to the puck a little too long in the slot. Uh, a couple times you could definitely tell he was getting, he was feeling a little close. Another great effort for Mike Levin. Cam, thanks a lot for doing this. And to the you fans out there, we look forward to reacting to what happens next Wednesday. Don't really know exactly what, what's going to happen as far as our next show, but we are going to record some sort of trade deadline fallout. Absolutely. Can't wait. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for listening. That's going to wrap up another episode of the Dog Pound Podcast, the official podcast of your Niagara Ice Dogs. Proudly brought to you by Global Pet Foods and Pets are undeniably part of the family. Visit any four of their great Niagara region locations. This has been another game recap installment following the Ice Dogs 5-2 victory on home ice against the Windsor Spitfires. Make sure you're following the podcast on X at Dog Pound Podcast and as well liking us on whatever audio platform you're listening to us today on demand. For Cam Halbert, my name is Brandon Caputo. We'll talk to you again next week following the trade deadline and as well the two games on home ice for the Ice Dogs against the Barry Colts and the Flint Firebirds. Have a good rest of your Sunday. We'll talk to you again next week. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver? I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.